Okay, today we're back on the 356 and getting started now on the drivetrain. This is the original numbers matching transaxle for this car. It's an SC Coupe 1964. It's dirty. So number one, we're going to be cleaning it up. Also, I remember from way back when on the driver's side, there's been some leaking in this hub and I've replaced the seals. I've tried to stop the leak when I drove this car, you know, 15 plus years ago, but I suspect there might be a little bit something else wrong. Also, we're gonna do a complete inspection and reseal of this transaxle. I wanna be as thorough as possible before we put this back in the car. You didn't think I was gonna keep these small wheels on here forever, did you? This is potentially a big can of worms, these transaxles. I've never taken one apart before. Now, this transaxle is a good example of, you know, ran when parked. That's become kind of a joke these days. But in my case, this car did run when it was parked. I took it apart to do rust repair because it had bubbles in the doors, the bottom sort of 10 inches were pretty much just Swiss cheese. And I remember the day I towed it home. It was like 25 years ago uh, this month, I think. I still enjoy this car. This is my first Porsche I've ever owned. Upside down. This is probably my least favorite engine stand because they are kind of tippy. You know, with just three wheels, it tends to do that. But we just gotta be careful. This does have a lot of weight out on the ends. We'll do our best. I'm having some trouble getting this attached in all four places. This is just not able to slot enough over. And then this side is just not able to connect with that hole. It's off about like an inch on this side and I can't get it centered either. So I could probably just attach it with three, but I think I have another idea. This is not the intended purpose for this. This is meant to go on the engine side so you can attach a starter to it. This is my own engine test stand product, but I think it's gonna allow me to attach this to positions that are further out. There's one hole here, one hole here, one hole here. Finally, I was able to get this thing kind of lined up with the input shaft. Didn't even have to go to the hardware store, which is always a plus. There's tons of bolts here, kind of cobbled together. If you have a, a engine stand yoke, like a VW or a Porsche style yoke, that would be a better way to do it. But this is what I had, so let's get it up on the stand. My days of just lifting stuff by myself are over. There we go, now it's floating. And I can rotate it, which is really nice. We'll have to get the oil out of it first. So at the time when I stored this, I tried to seal it up the best I could with these plastic bags and tape and everything. And then this has been stored for about 15 years and these axle boots have just completely disintegrated as well as the motor mounts. They came completely delaminated. Unfortunately, not anything coming out of the drain plug. I think it's all just leaked out through the axle tubes. There's the numbers on the bottom of that. I think it says, you know, 741 slash something. We'll have to clean it up. That's the serial number there, 78012. I'm just gonna knock off the big stuff with my dental tool, and then we'll use some solvents on this to clean it up. The drain plug doesn't look super bad. It, it has, you know, there's some stuff on it. I mean, that's metal, metal bits, but it, it's not like a giant 
chia pet. I don't think that's supposed to be bent over either. This is definitely wedged in there. There we go. Okay, now we're going for the auto parts kind of engine degreaser stuff. I think I've loosened, you know, most of the big spots, or I think I've kind of got it into this, you know, soupiness. So I, I think it's kind of loose. It's already looking much better. You can see the tiny spots that I missed with the dental pick. So it's just a matter of going back and forth, cleaning it up. And then the last stage, I like to use wheel cleaner, aluminum wheel cleaner. And that'll get sort of the brightness back out of the aluminum, I hope. This spring is so cool, close to being, being bound. So I'm just gonna jam a bunch of screwdrivers in it. Yeah, my fingers are pretty tired. Basically, I got all the, the heavy, heavy, heavy stuff off. And this thing looks pretty good as it is. I'm just gonna hit it with the wheel cleaner and just towel it off real quick. If you're gonna do this method, you're basically gonna need, you know, a, a big roll of paper towels, a couple spray bottles, the dental pick, compressed air. Um, what I do is I can, you know, like right here, I would compress air in there just shoot all the gunk out and then wipe it off with the paper towel. And you know, it's super tedious. Let me know if you have a better way. I just didn't want to use any sort of abrasive media or anything like that. And also um, there is some evidence of the original Cosmoline. Like there's a little bit of yellow staining right here. I think this was from the factory, had this yellow protective covering on it. Some of the areas I didn't really get to, like right here, um, I haven't turned the, the transaxle over yet, but this is evidence of the Cosmoline coating. This is the super clean wheel cleaner. The trick is to get it wet with water first, spray this on for 30 seconds, and then rinse it with water again. So this is just plain water. Kind of let it sit there for 30 seconds or so, and then we'll rotate the transaxle and let it just drain out. Okay, that side's done. I wanna show you on this side what, what the differences are. So you can see on this side, there's some little streaking here where the wheel cleaner rolled over to the, the bottom side. So I'm gonna go back with wheel cleaner on this side and hopefully keep it even without any streaking. This looks much better. It's much cleaner than it was. Actually, it looks pretty great but I am now going to take it apart. I'm gonna take off the axle tubes and probably the rear cover. Actually, I might take the whole thing apart to inspect it, including the differential, we'll see.
Okay, I've set up my puller on the back of this uh, cast housing here, or forged housing. That's going to allow this bearing to come off the shaft, and then the whole axle tube will come off. You want to leave the axle in the differential because there's some little fulcrum plates in there, and you don't want those to fall off. So it's important that we're only removing the axle tube. There's a small offset here between the forward side and the rearward side, so I just added a little piece of solid stock in there so it pulls more even. Let's give that a try. This isn't a super tight fit. I can feel it already pulling it off. So that's the bare axle right there. And you can see there's, you know, some wear on that dome piece. And that's where those fulcrum plates are inside there. But this doesn't look too gouged. It just looks like it's got the normal wear on it. This paper gasket doesn't seem like it was glued down very well. It looks like there's actually two of them. So that may have been part of the leak right there. So I'm saving these gaskets. We'll, we'll measure them and make sure the clearance between these two domes is correct. This rope here or string is gonna prevent, when I tip it over, it's gonna prevent this axle from falling out. I may end up taking it all the way out anyways, but I just wanna manage it the best I can so we keep all the parts together. Don't need them crashing on the floor. This side had a different gasket and it was glued down. Looked like it was just a single gasket. This is just a vent. So you can get all the built up pressure out of there when it heats up little baffle inside there. So this will go in the ultrasonic cleaner. There's a rubber seal in here, which I know that it leaks. So this means someone else has been in here before. This is a red RTV. Porsche never used RTV. This is when you sort of hope that a bunch of ball bearings don't just come rolling out. So first thing I notice is this big snake in here. This is just like some, some clear RTV. So someone's gooped this up. The gears themselves look pretty good. This is the reverse gear and the selector for reverse. This is the fork for reverse right here. It slides on that nose cone. That guy there slides on the nose cone. So everything looks pretty decent, pretty clean. Okay, the reason why I took this off before I took any of the differential stuff apart is this is one way to check the backlash of, this is the pinion shaft. So there's a, a gear that goes right here to the crown wheel and that's the pinion gear. 
And so the difficult thing, if you take apart this transaxle to reseal it, is you want to make sure that the backlash and the bearing preloads and those distances are correct. So one thing to do is using this reverse gear, since it's actually attached to the pinion gear, you're able to feel the backlash. And so I'm feeling it right now and it feels, to me, it feels like a lot. Yeah, I have set up this contraption here on the end of the transmission. So I've clamped my square to this reverse gear. So the dial indicator is backwards. You can't see the face right now, but I have it sort of positioned. So it's really close to the teeth or the center line of the tooth that is pushing the dial indicator up and down. And then of course the dial indicator is mounted on these universal bars. So here's how it looks on this side. That's the gauge right there. And then in order to keep the crown wheel from turning, I am using this long stick. Okay, it's got a point on the end and I'm putting it here in the drain hole and I can find the gear. It's right there. And then I just push up like this. That really kind of prevents the, the crown gear from moving while I cycle the reverse gear up and down to see what the play is or the backlash is. And so this is the backlash right here. I don't know if you can see it on that gauge. So it goes from 45 to 60. Actually, it's probably 40, 45 and a half to 60. 14 and then you divide by three on this method because the reverse gear is a lot bigger in diameter than the pinion gear. So you divide by three and it gives you 0 0.0046, which is actually, I think, pretty close. The tolerance is like 0 0.004 to 0 0.007, and that's a pretty wide range. The actual backlash is printed on the end of the gear, which I can't see it because it's inside. But typically it's like 0.15 millimeters or so, which is like, you know, 0.13 to 0.15, somewhere in like the 0 0.006 range. So we have to keep track of the gasket thicknesses so we can maintain that ring and pinion clearance. So here's one of those shims right there. It's a very important shim. And I need to take this string apart. Got myself tied here in a knot. And then the ring bolts here, this is a C, so it's got this 12 bolt differential. And these are the correct bolts with the lock washers on there. So nothing looks incorrect there. Just wanna look at the carrier, which is on the other side. Make sure nothing is cracked. And there we have it. This is the differential carrier. Um, the, the ring gear teeth, you know, look, look okay. I don't see any major gouging or wear on them. They look shiny, they look okay. Um, this surface here looks, looks okay. Doesn't look like the bearings are spinning or anything on there. This looks okay. This shim is a little thin, kind of, Kind of a wonky shim on that side but in general i don't see any cracks so if i roll this around typically it cracks from like this this hole right here or right here so if there's a crack you definitely see it so what i may do is either take this to get magnafluxed or get some dye or penetrating dye and look at it more carefully like with a microscope or with a 
with a magnifying glass just to make sure there's integrity of this is good. And while we're at it, we might as well take the whole cluster out too. God, can open worms everywhere? <laughs> See what kind of goodies are in here. That's the whole transmission right there. Super uh, simple. So right away, just looking at that pinion, pinion gear, looks like there's no pitting, no gouging, nothing you can feel with a fingernail or anything. So that all feels fantastic. That bearing is good. The gears look good. Um, I can see some, some wear in the dog teeth. I'll show you those here in a picture probably. You gotta really, really zoom in to see those. But each of the gears look, look good. Nothing is you know, torn or missing or broken or chipped. So looks like we're in uh, pretty good shape, a little better than I expected. Also, we gotta be very, very careful about this gasket. This gasket separated when I pulled it apart. So we're gonna have to do our best to re replicate that distance because that affects how far this pinion goes into the housing, and that definitely affects the, the gear uh, mesh. And that's really why I measured the backlash before, because I wanna be able to get it right where it was. Even though the method was kinda of suspect, I'm gonna do it the same way when I return it back to original. This bearing here on the other cover uh, feels really nice, real smooth, although I did discover a problem. Uh, this is a big one because this race right here, I've just wiped it clean with a paper towel and it is worn. It's, it's not smooth and shiny. It has a uh, texture to it. It's almost like it's been sandblasted or something. The other problem I just realized is this bushing here for the reverse looks like it's, it's falling out. I think that's supposed to be pushed all the way in. So that also looks like it is a accident waiting to happen right here. Like I said, this is a can of worms. And now that it's open, of course, you'll find problems. And luckily it's not the ring and pinion, but in order to change that just one bearing requires you to take the whole cluster apart and press all the gears off the pinion shaft, replace the bearing, replace the race inside here. So that's pretty involved. Um, you guys let me know what you think. Is this something that I should send off and, and have a pro work on while I get the rest of the car ready? Or is this something that I should dive into and uh, you know learn and get experience with because I have another transmission in, the, in Mac that also needs some work. Plus I bought another transmission, uh, a 915, a later model one that has a taller uh, ring and pinion 831, which is what I want for the bigger engine. So I have some work to do on transaxles in the future, and the garage time in me just says, let's order the parts and start working on it. I can borrow some tools, uh, at least I think I can, for setting the pinion depth and also doing the backlash on the ring and pinion. So I, I'm not afraid to make a few tools too if I need to. So let me know what you think. Is this something I should do? Is this something you guys wanna see? Or is this something I should try to get in the queue? I'm not sure I'm gonna find a builder who can do this in sort of the time frame that I need. So lots of options, but let me know what you would do. Cheers.